Okay, so we're going to talk about freeing and lambda expressions. So I, one thing I first thought when I first learned this was like, if you had, let's say you had lambda x, so lambda y goes to x plus y. I always thought that it kind of went this way. Like it started off with lambda x and then it went to lambda y. And then it you kind of ended up with this x plus y, but it's really, I mean, the arrows make it look like that, but that's not how it is. What you do first is this y. So let's say you had two numbers over here. Like these are the, um, these are the numbers you're evaluating. So this one, this first one, this two would be the y. So you would plug this two in for the y first. And this is a higher order function because once you plug in the two for y, then it returns a function of x. So when you plug this in, this 2 goes away because you use the information. This will turn into um, so it'll turn into x plus 2. And then this goes away. So then you, you're left with lambda x goes to x plus 2. And then I like to put a comma 3 here because 2 is already used. Um, so you see that it like unwraps from the inside out. And then now we use the 3 in for x, so then you have 3 plus 2, which gives you 5. And this is really all that higher order expressions are, um, higher order functions. We, I mean, everyone always says that, oh, it's a function that turns a function, or a function that takes a function as an argument. That always makes it really confusing to me, but all it really means is you just plug in the number. So here, this was... So it's originally a function of x comma y, and then it goes to, an, to you know some other number. In this case, it's an integer. Um, and then so sometimes, like you know, in Haskell they say x goes to y goes to int. That's the answer. And you know, some people kind of like to think about it as x comma y goes to int. Um, but one, I mean, part of my point is you could do this. Excuse me, that should be in there. Um, but yeah, the, the point is just that, let's say you, uh, I'm glad I lost my cursor here, there we go. Um, I guess my point is just, you know, it really, it sort of is a function of x and y, but you could, you could flip flop. Okay, so let's do this. Let's say you know, earlier we did, we did x then y. So we did x first, then y. So let's do it the other way, and then, you know, two and three over here. Um, but what we could do is we could say lambda y, and we could say, uh, yeah, we could say lambda x, and then it goes to x plus y. And then here, dang it, I forgot, okay. Uh, here we got, now we want three comma two. So this just means, in this case, you plug in the three for x first, so then you would get uh, 3 plus y, and then you'd have a 2 here. Oh, what happened there? There we go. And then you would have a lambda y here. And so now your output of the function was a function of y. So I guess kind of what I'm trying to say is you originally have an f of x, y, right? And they say these higher order functions and stuff, but, but really what this just turns into you can either say it's an f of y if you plug in an x, or it can be an f of x if you plug in a y, and then eventually you're going to get the answer. So it, in this case, it kind of just depends on what you plug in first. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's just sort of a simpler way to look at this. You know, if you have a function of two arguments, and you plug you plug something in for one of the argument for one of the arguments, then what you're going to get back is a function of the other argument. You see that? So it's um, so they call it a higher order function, but really it's just you plug one thing in and you're still left with a function of the other thing, and that's really all it is. Um, so yeah, I guess I, could, I I don't know. I could probably give a few other examples. Um, let's see here. Uh, hmm. Uh, that's kind of what I wanted to 
to go with. So, yeah, let's see uh, the first one. <laughs> 